Hi guys, welcome back to one of my videos. Today we are here to have a look how to install the Ableton beta script. And what I have done is I've put it in a Dropbox folder which I share regularly with the FL Studio script. I've not done anything fancy with any iMaps yet, but if you do want to download the iMap, then you can go to control surfaces on the icon website my script will support all of these units so the purpose of this beta is to give you guys a go and perhaps you can report back you know anything you don't think is quite working if you wish guys after you've installed your imap just for good practice you can go on to your main door and just set it to ableton live and then everything will flash on every device and it will just say, you know, it's on live. I'm just going to minimize that, leave it open for good practice. And uh, we'll open up live. So when we start in live, we have these four tracks. This is loaded up over here. So what we can do is we can right click and insert a new track and that will add another one here. And I'm just going to go on my keyboard and I'm going to use control C. Control T to add a track and then another one and another one and I'm just going to keep adding them all the way across until I get 32 so now all the tracks are added and as you can see the color bands the channels and the names and the standard buses information etc etc is all working if I were to press select on here it will select the corresponding track in Ableton and we can do it with any of these extenders all the standard stuff you'd expect mute mutes a track solo mutes everything else except the track you soloed record will um, a track if we click on this over here and I will be adding the uh, all the fancy touchscreen features later to change windows and stuff we can do the jog wheel we can move left and right i think this left and right needs refining so it like scrolls over the window there's something on the list that goes up and down again i think maybe that can be refined so when i go to the top the uh, tracks sort of move as well but we can refine that out and then you can use the zoom to zoom all the way in all the way out and we do the vertical zoom as I said I've not really touched anything on the touchscreen yet so don't expect any functionality out of the legacy buttons but the goal is to get you guys testing everything else so for example we can go back here uh, I should be moving that pan on the screen there you go Standard features like you'd expect, press that, goes back to centre, uh, all that good stuff. Faders, as you'd expect, move up and down, moving the screen, moves the faders, and uh, really pretty much the standard stuff you would expect. So, what we need to do is have a look at how you set this up. So, what you're going to want to do first is you need to put the scripts here. I've just like made some ad hoc extender 1, 2 and 3 just for my setup today. To get to this folder, this is in this PC. Go to your documents and then find Ableton. Mine's at the top. And then we've got this user library. And then in here, you've got remote scripts. Now, if this isn't here, don't fear. Right click, new folder, and just create it and call it remote scripts. Exactly as it's spelt there. I done this the very first time through. So I had to go on this user library. I right clicked and added a new folder and I added that remote scripts uh, if it's already there then uh, you, you won't have to do that I'm just letting you know that's what I had to do the very first time many moons ago 
So once you've got this folder, all you've got to do is download my file off my Dropbox there. That'll appear in your downloads or whatever. And then you can open it from the downloads and you'll get all the folders in here. Uh, one day, I promise I'm going to buy this. I've been promising for 20 years. Then you've got your scripts there. If you've only got one main unit and one extender or whatever, uh, there's no point downloading it all. Just download what you need and uh, just drop it into this remote scripts folder. And this is just so Ableton can detect it. Once you've done all that, close Ableton if you've already got it open and re to reinitialize everything and it will pick them scripts up and then click on your options settings at the bottom here and then this is where on the link tempo and MIDI you can add your control surfaces it looks like you can add up to six control surfaces have a look at the order of your units so I've got extender 1, extender 2, my main unit and extension 4. Now when you power these units off and power them on you'll notice that the record button lights up on each one so when you do that turn it off turn it on and when you see a record button lighting up just press whatever position that unit is in so for example if you're doing unit 4 turn it off turn it on and when you see one of these record buttons light up just hit the fourth record button and that will like sort of change the name to as you can see there icon v1 x4 otherwise if you don't set it it's just called x1 and that could get confusing when you're trying to find your x4 it's this is more confusing on larger setups like this as you won't know which unit is which so it's very good practice to uh to press that record button now the order of your units is the order that you want to select the scripts in. So I've got X1 all the way on the left over here. So in here, obviously, I'm going to just select XT, not number two or number three or anything like that, because it's my first extender. And then I've selected XT2 for my second extender. And then because I've got my main unit next, that's going to be third in the list. So I've just selected the regular script for a main unit there. And on my fourth one over here, I've selected XT3. I know it's in the fourth position, but it is the third extender. So the layering and ordering of these tracks from 1 to 32 is based on the order that you've got your script selected in here so if my main unit was in the first slot it would start from track one but because my main unit is in the third slot it starts from track 17 and then i should be able to bank through if i wish and i can bank back so that is how you select your scripts now you've got an input and an output um, so obviously in the input for my first one I've got the X1 selected there notice you've got port 2, port 3, port 4 you don't really use these unless you're using multiple doors so if I was using Ableton as my main door on door number 1 and for example I was using FL Studio on number 2 then I would use port 2 in FL Studio and port 3 for another door if I had a third door I believe port 4 is for the IMAP so uh, we're not really to use port 4 but you're just going to use the main name if you're just using one door so that's uh, what that is if you were wondering so the output is also going to be X1 and that's why it's really important to select the um, unit so you can identify the name so I know X1 refers to my first unit it's nice and organized my main unit is sitting in number three so i've selected on the input just the v1m not not port two or anything because i'm just using this as my main door uh, at the moment so i've selected just that main one 
and then over here the output's just going to match exactly the same name so input output same name my fourth unit is fourth on the list so I have x1 4 and v1 dash x4 on the output now down here this will probably light a few bits and bobs up the first time you do this and by the way you only have to do all this once so you can ignore port 2's and port 3, port 4's, you can ignore all that I've not bothered with selecting any of these I've just highlighted the track and it works fine for me let me know in the comments uh, if you think otherwise and the same for the outputs down here just make sure you select your main script uh, it'll either be my script name or the device name if it's the first time you're doing it just make sure you got them toggled on so remember not port 2 or port 3 unless Ableton is your second door and you're using port 2 but that is the only reason you would do that the good news is you only have to do this once Ableton will remember this forever so if I was to go back out of here now uh, all this stays lit up when you exit by the way because this is the beta it's not uh, finished yet still in development but when I open up a new session there you can see the controller has reinitialized itself I'm just going to hit control T to add some tracks there we go right so we can use this loop button to activate the loop this will be refined more as the script continues in development if I just press play and I do apologize the OBS Ableton is hogging my audio it won't allow it to go into OBS but as you can see the meters work fine I know on a legacy the master didn't work but I've got the left and right working there so basically Ableton is spitting out the left and right and I've done like the merge equivalent to see a mono signal that represents stereo output represents stereo metering obviously as you can see the clock and stuff like that's working so just press stop that'll go down nice and then you'll see the MIDI signal stops after a few seconds just to make sure it captures all them peaks nicely and tall. They are vanished. The plan is to keep refining the script, which is going extremely well. This is going to be standardized with FL Studio. As both scripts run almost identical, apart from a door map and an entry level script, but the principle and the logic across both doors is identical identical as far as the hardware is concerned I apologize if this video is a little bit disjointed um, I just wanted to release something with a beta script just to give you an idea of how to install it and what it does please flood me with comments now if you are having any trouble with getting the beta script working please leave me a comment I respond to all the comments or jump on to the Facebook page here which is the um, the icon V1M P1M Nano slash FL Studio I did try a couple of times to change this to FL Studio and Ableton but the Facebook police won't allow me to change the name but I do regular videos on here explaining the progress of the script you can get me a little comment if you're struggling with something and probably if you do it through the facebook page i'll probably post a little video just saying how to solve your issue so cheers for watching guys i will leave a link in the description to download the beta and i will pin it in the comments as well Thank you very much guys and hope to catch you soon. Bye bye.